Okay, this is a 2010 Honda Fit that I am going to try to replace the electric power steering EPS uh, computer unit thingy. Looks like that. And it is way tucked in the back uh, behind the fuse box. So I'm going to do two experimental things on this one. I'm going to try to remove it without taking anything else apart other than the dash pieces that I already took out. Um, I've already disconnected the battery, by the way. Uh, and number two, I'm going to replace a 2010 unit with a 2013 unit that I bought online, used, uh, and hope that they're the same. I don't know. I couldn't find anyone that's done it, so we're just going to see if it fixes it. The first bolt I'm going to take off is this easy one right here on the firewall. I can point to that without getting a shadow. That one right there. I'm gonna take that off. Okay, the other two bolts are on the inside firewall, and I'm not gonna be able to really uh, show you. I might have to do like a still picture and uh, draw where these two bolts are, but I can kind of see them and I kind of know where they are. And I'm just gonna use an extension to try to get back there. Okay, hard to see, but I got the socket on one of the bolts. And you can see the ratchets way over there. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll get into the trying to take it apart uh, by taking shortcuts, which uh, was a mistake. But uh, the new one is in, and I'll put a picture in there of uh, which one it is, but it's from a 2013 Honda Fit, and this is a 2010 Honda Fit. And when I put it all back together, turn it on, no power steering light, and I just drove it around the block. No power steering light, power steering works fine. Um, so it is possible to use a different EPS uh, module, computer, whatever you want to call it, uh, from different years, as long as it's in the same generation, plug and play. Okay, the main reason you can't just get to those bolts is because the wiring harnesses in the back uh, are in the way and it's just a nightmare to try to get the socket in there without being able to really see it. Um, but you don't have to take every single one of these plugs out of the fuse box. You just gotta give yourself enough room to move it down so that you can kind of get your arm back in there and get to the bolts. Um, the main things is there are two bolts holding it in. One's here and one's on the right. And there's a clip back here that's clipped into the dash or into the, you know, brackets for the dash. Um, and then there's this, uh, there's these two relays up here. There's a clip holding that on to the top of the fuse box. And it's kind of tricky to get out, but you push down on the pin and you pull those forward toward the seats and then that unclips and then the top can swing down that makes it a lot easier to get back behind there and then that bracket for the EPS has a wire harness clip uh, plastic you know those plastic clips that hold the wires in it so that's uh, something you have to remove and then those two bolts on the bracket on the left the top one you just have to loosen the bottom one you have to take out and then the bracket will slide down and then there's also the bolt on the right um, on the firewall. So it's not that hard to get out. It's just that the bracket is an L shape. So it's hard to maneuver everything. It's hard to get to those bolts on the firewall. So you kind of do got to take some of these plugs out to kind of give yourself some room and uh, definitely take pictures of, uh, of all of them, even though they kind of just get in where they fit in. But um, it's better to just take pictures of everything before you start removing it because it just makes it easier to figure out how to put it back. So yeah, I just kind of dropped that down. I had to remove a couple clips that were holding wire harnesses in so I could get around the wire harnesses to take those bolts out. Took the whole bracket out. Um, you know, switched the bracket from one unit to the other. Put it back in, plugged all this stuff in, put it all back together. Obviously I need to do the plastic still. Uh, and then just, you know, the car worked. So hopefully it uh, continues to work. I might take apart the other EPS to see if there's anything like obviously burnt or messed up inside, but um, 
yeah, this, this fix worked. I bought the uh, 2013 one online for like, I think I paid 50 bucks for it. So that was a lot cheaper and easier. I, I think even cheaper than going to some junkyards because who knows what they're going to charge you for if they don't know what it is. But anyway, hopefully that helps somebody. Uh, I'll try to piece this video together with all the photos and everything. Uh, peace. Uh, something I forgot to mention. <laughs> Another reason you want to uh, not shortcut anything is I dropped a tool into the most insane crevice of that car. Um, I've been working on Hondas for 25 years and I've never dropped a tool in a place so crazy. And it was like two extensions and a 10 millimeter. The odds of it happening are just insane, but it, it happened and it took me hours to, uh, get it back out. And I had to go buy like two magnet tools and I had to use like one of those little cameras that you drop in. And I, I mean, it was insane. It was so frustrating. So uh, I ended up taping that hole up afterwards so I didn't drop anything else in there. Um, it was that bad. It was horrible. So, yeah, don't take shortcuts. Uh, you know, take your time. Do it the right way. Um, but it's good to know that that other computer worked. So.